We're back, and we were just talking about before the show started that Jameis Winston should be protected at all costs. He's a national treasure, and he really is. We need him in more primetime games. I don't just want him at one o'clock games. I don't just want him at four o'clock games. I want him prime time. He's must watch he television. Appointment viewing. He'll throw for five hundred. He'll also throw two pick sixes. He'll do some shenanigans. I think um, they said he. I think PFT from part of my take said he had 668 total passing yards. If you include the pick sixes, <laughs> <laughs> he had uh 497 or 493 of his own. Um, God, I love him. And then afterwards he said, Lord, I'm just asking for the Lord to deliver me from pick sixes. <laughs> it's just, and I, I genuinely believe, I genuinely believe he's praying to be delivered from pick sixes. He he is so absolutely he, that's not that's even an just, act. That's not an act. That's not hyperbole. He is sincerely believing and praying to be delivered from pick sixes. And I that bet Colin is Moore happy. is praying for the same thing. Did you know I saw I didn't know this part, right? Obviously he was a, a stud at, at Florida State. And but what I didn't know, I saw a clip the other day. He was in the world's, like the USA Futures baseball really? team. And Carlos Correa, who's an all-star in Major League Baseball, is at the plate. And Jameis Winston's on third base, and he steals home. I mean, that's the level of baseball player Jameis Winston was. I didn't know that either. Yeah, he famously a... got suspended one time for stealing lobster at a grocery store. And... And do you remember this? He got suspended for stealing lobster and he couldn't play. I don't remember but, that, no. But he got dressed in full uniform and came on the field to the That like, I remember. At the game. Yeah, yeah. That I remember. And the coach was like like the coach, they have him on camera going, Jesus, Jameis. His interview on part of my take like last year was was so legendary. When he's talking about how wins is literally in his last name. <laughs> like it, it's <laughs> he's the best all right i know that people cry when we talk too much football we're gonna have to do like a bonus episode for football talk because josh allen is the mvp he needs to be talked about that play where cooper pitched it back to him and, and allen ran it in just absolutely incredible first quarterback ever to throw a passing touchdown and a recept and a receiving touchdown and a rushing touchdown in the same game legendary but we're here to talk wrestling because we got cklb this weekend and you did the crystal ball update, which is weeks, if not months, in the making. But let's start off with CKLV because one of the interesting things that always happens, and it usually happens right after we get done recording, where mm -hmm. it's like, this guy's not in. This guy's not in. And obviously, when we preview a show, we are not only anticipating, but we're hoping everybody goes. From a healthy standpoint, from a return standpoint you know we're talking best case scenarios and as and entry honestly, in the, the earlier in the year the more confident you are in those guys uh competing right mm -hmm. but we got a lot of what seems to be scratches now what happens is they start getting loaded teams start getting loaded into track wrestling i think that's what's going on anyway i'm being sent entries i'm being sent people are like uh well not people but ryan holmes and earl are gathering who's getting entered into the system and i have they sent me a spreadsheet of it and you know you can tell who's there and who's not there now not every school has put their entries in arizona state hasn't put their entries in um there's a couple significant teams that haven't put their entries in yet. Um, but there are more scratches than typical for Cliff Keen Las Vegas. Um, let's go through them. Go, on, go, go through them, uh, JB. So, well, one that we... Bakersfield has not put their lineup in, but it is looking more and more like Ferrari will not be there. I tweeted well, out... Yeah. I tweeted out... And I tagged him saying, are we going to see Ferrari at the CKLV, which I, I told you guys yesterday on the show I was going to do. Um, and he didn't respond. So, and again, he was like at a gym training or something with his family. So 
I'm assuming at this point, Ferrari's not going. If he does, it'd be an amazing last-minute surprise. I don't think we see him. That One of the biggest misses so far that we're bummed about is Cornell. Cornell must just be severely banged up because they've got probably half a squad going. Half a squad. They might not even have ha- – well, they might not have half a squad. So Ferrari is speculate, speculative, right? Mm-hmm. You kind of needled the bull, and he didn't respond, which typical Ferrari, if he was going, you'd think he responds. So that's conjecture. But Cornell, from what they have in the system, which maps with what we were concerned about, or at least the, the personnel that we were concerned about, we know that they have entered... Colt Barley, Evan Knoyer, Aiden Compton, Ethan Fernandez, Aiden Hanning, Marcelo Milani, Simon Ruiz, Josh Saunders, Brett Unger, and Nathan Wade. Um, which means no Greg D at 25. Um, no oh, Unger in. Unger is in. No Vince Cornell at 41. No Meyer Shapiro at 57. Uh, no Mikey Delegata at 97. No Ashton Davis at heavyweight. And Julian Ramirez and Chris Foca can't wrestle till next semester. So that's that's not on the staff or any injuries or anything. That's just bylaws. They can't wrestle. So uh, Cornell, take their when, – when this tournament's over and you look at their team points, remember, they didn't have – they had a 30% of their starters – no Greg D, no Vince Cornella, no Meyer Shapiro, no Julian Foca, no Chris uh, Julian Ramirez, Chris Foca, Mikey Delegata, Ash Davis. A lot of guys. Yeah. Um NC State. NC State mostly intact. Um they list Vince Robinson, not Camacho at 25. Um there is no Dagan O'Reen, Dragon O'Reen at 33. It's Troy Homan. There is no Kai Arena at 41. It is somebody else. I forget off the top of my head. Um, no Dylan Fishback at 84. So the key ones that NC State are missing is Oreen and Fishback. Nebraska's roster is in. They are taking everybody. Everybody is listed. But I was talking to Nebraska. Guy, one of their guys is not going. Um. They're sending everybody. I think maybe Pinto or Silas. I forget what they told me. I think it might be Silas. Um, but Nebraska almost whole. Ohio State's a little interesting. Uh, really interesting. Uh, it is. Um, Brendan McCrone, not Vinnie Kilkiri, which is not surprising. Starter at 33, Buzaka, starter at 41, Mendez, no D'Amelio is listed at 49. Um, Patty is listed at 57, 65 is Sammy Sasso, 74, no Karchla. So no Karchla yeah. is listed and no Rocco. Um, but Giog and Feldman are both in there. Yeah, disappointed that Karchla is not returning yet and no Rocco. I mean, I mean, that kind of tells you that it's solidified. Rocco's not going to burn his red shirt. I think if he, it would kind of be, I don't think he can wrestle in this and not burn his red shirt. So it's just, and we kind of mentioned that right. in yesterday's show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that it? Uh, as far as surprise, Oregon state looks full. Purdue looks full. South Dakota State looks full. Oh, Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, Ventresca. Who's their 33? Oh, no Connor McGonigal. No Connor McGonigal listed um, at this time. At this time. Um, I don't even think they listed a 33. Also hearing that it's going to be Jacob Frost instead of Redding for Iowa State. Sounds like Frost won the wrestle off. Um, yeah, probably no younger. Uh, they haven't. They, no younger. 
They haven't put their entries in yet, right? No, they haven't. I'm really interested to see who they put at 25 as well. I mean, they got a lot of they got a lot of interesting guys at 25. So we got Meza, they got Terakina, they got Perryman. Forgetting one, two. Obviously, the 33 is Evan Frost. Jacob Frost apparently won the wrestle off with um, Redding, which is a good sign for Iowa State because, well, I mean, in my book, I'm, I'm I think Zach Redding's very good. And so if Jacob Frost has beaten him, that's a good sign for Iowa State. Um, but back to Tech. Latona's listed at 41, 49. Nobody's – oh, Henson. Yeah, Henson. Hippolito, 57, 65. Is Mac Church, 74. There's nobody listed at 74. There's nobody listed at 74 or 33. So no Connor McGonagall and no who's her seventy four pounder Wolak. There's no Wolak. Man, now maybe they maybe they could eventually enter them, but right now they're not on the list that I received anyway. Um, but it is Mullen, not Kaka heavyweight. It's Andy Smith, not Sonny Sasso, at ninety seven. TJ Stewart in at eighty four. I love your TJ Stewart by note in the crystal ball, which we'll get to. You like that? Yeah. I think the um, word was knuckleheads. Knuckleheads. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's that's CKLV updates as far as we have them. Um, and this is going off what was entered in the system. Um, so there there could be I, – I don't know when – if there's a deadline, if there's last-minute changes that could be made. But as of now, those are the entries and notable – absences that we see in the system yep and you said i think seeds come out today right today or tomorrow it should come out today i know i don't seed them um i don't seed them they typically i know who does i know who does basically seed them he does the work i i mean tournaments that i seed sometimes operate like this too it's like I submit my seeds and they want to like nitpick and go through them and mm-hmm. maybe they might make some changes. I don't know. Fine with me. But uh, somebody, the person that seeds them and has sent them, he's done it. He sent them when they go up. Um, he expects today. I expect today. It's always usually Tuesday. All right. So those should come out soon. Um, we'll obviously follow us if you're not. I don't know what you're doing. Follow us both on Twitter, everywhere else, and, and we're, we'll be sending out updates about that. Um, and the real reason we're doing the show today, that, that just happened to be some good nuggets we wanted to pass along. But one of the reasons we wanted to do the show is that the crystal ball is out. And we're going to go through the weights. And I, I'm going to put screenshots up on the screen and for those of you watching on YouTube or listening on Apple or Spotify, Crystal Ball is typically behind a paywall on Willie's Rockfin. So if you don't subscribe, this is a good little teaser of it. And the full Crystal Ball, Willie actually, maybe if you don't know, Willie predicts with his Crystal Ball who his top eight is going to be in March at NCAAs. He also does four guys in the blood round, four guys in the round of 16. So it's 16 total guys. It's a pretty full um, preview and analysis. You can go to Rockfin, subscribe, and you get access to it all. It's updated regularly. But on the screen, because I didn't want to take out the whole video, we'll put up you know the top eight, and the rest of them the rest of them are on his Rockfin, um, and and it gets updated regularly. And we try to do a show around you know when these updates happen. Yeah, so it's a little different than. Um... And I think that's the that's the draw to it. You know, when I first started Crystal Ball, it was like I didn't want to get into the rankings game because, frankly, I don't really like college rankings too much. Like, I like to look at them, but I don't put much stock into them because they have their limitations, right? They're, they have to be based on prior results. But you know that prior results 
aren't always going to think the person that won it last year isn't necessarily going to win it this year. The person that plays fifth maybe isn't the same guy as he was last year. Maybe he's a a whole lot better. So Mm -hmm. the pecking order isn't always the pecking order, and they certainly can't account for um, freshmen, redshirt freshmen, true freshmen especially. But um, so I didn't want to get into the rankings game, college rankings. So I was like, I'll I'll do something different. I'll do my projections. And I I was just doing it for fun. And then everybody was like, yo, you got to do that all the time. So I think the draw to it is people love rankings, but they also like to see the wrinkles. They also like to see, okay, well, on Intermat and probably Flow and WrestleStat, Luke Lillidal is 16. But that's only because if it's a process – that's only because they have to stick to their rankings process. But I can have them number one, and I do. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's get right into it then. Let's start off with twenty five. I'm going to put them on the screen. Well, here's a here's a little f- like footnote that's going to make you like b- make your brain blow. It may, like I when I do these, so I do them all, and then I calculate up the team points. But I don't. I don't place kids on certain teams with the thought in mind, well, I got to make sure they don't have too many points and I got to make sure this team has a lot of points. Like I don't do that. Right. I just, I get to the end and the totals are the totals. I got done doing this batch of crystal ball and I realized not, this isn't how many Penn state kids I have. Number one. This is how many kids I moved to number one this week. Four. <laughs> I, I, I said four new Penn State champs. Absolutely bonkers. Uh, Penn State Willie. Yeah. Wait, is it four? Lilla Dolls one. Well, don't spoil it. Let's get into it as we go wait by okay, wait. Okay. All right. Okay, let's... Go ahead. Roll 25. All right. We go. got 25 on the screen. Go ahead. Luke Lilladal, my number one, and and I fully admit, and you can see there in the comments that, you know, Richie Figs is your returning national champ, but he wasn't consistent last year. He wasn't bulletproof last year, and he's dinged up this year, and he's mess, missing key competitions. You know, he lost uh, – he defaulted out of Dactronics. He um, missed a dual meet with Spratly. He's a question mark for this weekend. And so I don't know how healthy he is. I don't know how, what kind of shape he's in. And so I have some question marks. Now you can say, Willie, Luke Little Dog didn't wrestle a freaking match in college yet, a significant match. Uh, but you're going to pencil him in as, as one? Right, listen, if you don't agree with me on this one, I'm fine with it. Who, who would you put one? Matt Ramos, who DNP'd last year? I mean, Matt Ramos could beat Spencer Lee. He could also DNP. Those two things both happened. Mm-hmm. And like you said, too, a lot of it's based on the way I like looking at crystal ball is it, it's kind of a projection of momentum. Spratly right now, for example, being four, he could easily propel higher, I think, depending on what he does this weekend. If he takes out the field and looks great, Maybe he's number two. You know, a lot of it has to do with momentum and where guys are going and, and how they're being. I think Lilladol being the one is is much more of an outlier in your predictions. That's that's probably yeah. the biggest one of ranking wise undeserving. You having a sixteenth ranked guy is number one. Yeah. But yeah. like I mean, you and, said, and it's that's that's the thing about Crystal Ball is that <clears throat> You know, the other rankings have to go off deserve and they have to go off results. And I can, to me, deserves has nothing to do with it. To me, crystal ball is confidence. And it, they're, they're sort of tiered in my confidence to place high or to win. And you could say, well, why do you have confidence in Luke Lilladal? Why don't you run through him, by the way, for the audio listeners? Why don't you run through who you got? Okay, I have Luke Lilladal as your national champ and Matt Ramos as your runner-up. Richie Figgs, three. I sort of hedged there a little bit. Troy Spratley, four. Caleb Smith in Nebraska, five. He was six last year. Eddie Van Tresca, 
who AA two years ago and was injured last year. I have him at six. Jory Volk, I have at seven. He was seven last year. Vince Robinson, a redshirt freshman, I have at eight. Uh, for the guys on the fringe, Tanner Jordan, Steve O'Poolin, Brendan McCrone, Dean Peterson, I know is off to a rough start, but I still think when he's healthy, he's good. Nico Provo, Greg D. Nicolai Rivera, who I think people are overlooking, his first year down at 125. The kids, if he has no problems making weight, he's going to be a handful of problems at 125. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maximo Renteria at... Um, also round of 16. So that's 125. And I know Penn State get from the team angle when you're analyzing this. Um, I know Penn State gets um, a big boost. They go from 15 projected points in my formula to 22. Not that they need it. Um, and the teams that are knocking on their door, right? Uh, Okie State. Has a guy at four with Spratley getting 13 points. Nebraska, who's a podium uh, shot, who has a podium shot, um, getting 11 with Caleb Smith, Eddie Ventresca at six. Now, it, the one guy that's not on here, and I have Tanner Jordan in the blood round, but the one guy that's not on here from a team that's now chasing all of a sudden for a podium spot is Minnesota and Cooper Flynn. I do not have Cooper Flynn uh, in my top 16, despite him beating Tanner Jordan um, last week. So um, there is a point. If you're a Gopher fan, you're saying, Willie, you're shortchanging us a little bit here. Sure. That, that could be possible. You could, there are outlying Minnesota points. If you max there at 25. Did you leave Flynn out because you you did this before the duel where he Tanner Jordan he literally just beat on what on Sunday, so you yeah. kind of did this before. Did you leave him out before, or what was the rationale there? Well, I did do it before, but then before I published, I was like, should I put Flynn in? And dro- well, I did drop Jordan. I dropped Jordan and put Vince Robinson in the top eight. And I dropped Jordan from eight to blood round, but I'm just not convinced that Flynn and you know, Flynn was one and two last year at NCAAs. So um, I think that, I think that Cooper Flynn could beat a lot of these guys. Uh, and I think he could certainly blood round seven, eight match. I think he can certainly do that, but I also think he could, I also think he wrestles a ton of tight matches, low scoring, one takedown matches, and I'm not convinced he could string them all together back to back to back. And so for the time being, I'm leaving him off. And he does, you know, it's kind of a thing of being in the Big Ten. You see a lot of the the ranked guys and best guys because even just his dual meets alone, he's going to see Caleb Smith in the duel next month. He's going to see Dean Peterson McCronin, Matt Ramos. He's going to see a lot of these top guys. So he's going to have his chance throughout the season to continue to develop, see where he is against these top guys. I mean, I, what is he ranked right now? Ranked. Uh, uh, Flynn. Let me look. I don't know what he's ranked. I didn't put that in. Um, he's ranked Cooper, 13th. Who, yeah. So he's on the bubble, you know, round of 16 guy, blood yep. round guy. Um, and Tanner Jordan, who he beat, dropped. This is Intermat, drops from fourth to six. Yep. And, and you know, again, we said it on the show, but CKLV, uh, you might not see figs, but of the teams entered, you could see one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 10, 11, 12, the top 12 with the exception of number five. That's insane. That's and, insane. And, in and most, Greg. In You're most not, world. We're not going to see Greg. We're not going to see Greg. We're not going to see Richie. So, But still, you're going to have yeah. nine of the top 12. Um, and in most worlds, most of the time, you'd say, okay, we're going to get some data. We're going to know. After this weekend, we're going to know what 125 is about. Nope. They could wrestle the same bracket next week and have totally different results. That's just the nature of 125 the last three years. It's been Spencer and everybody else, and anybody could win on any given day. 
Yep. And 25 too, by the way, I, I, on one hand, it's the funnest weight to crystal ball because absolutely anything can happen. On the other, it means absolutely nothing because absolutely yeah. anything can happen. <laughs> I know. Now, I will say, if I say this, if Matt Ramos came out and boat raced everybody, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. And 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 that would be a result that would kind of stick with me, you know. But we'll see. All right, moving on to thirty three. Just pulled it up here yeah. on screen. 33 and 41 are not, um, did not undergo a whole lot of changes. Back to back weights that um, don't have a heck of a lot of changes. Um, Ryan Crookham remains one. I did move Lucas Bird ahead of Nasir Bailey, and I think Dylan Raggison. I think I had Bird uh, fourth before. Bailey Raggison from Michigan. Um, Drake Ayala from Iowa. I have him five. He was a runner-up last year at 125. Evan Frost, who Ayala beat a couple weeks ago at six. Shawver, seven. Rutgers. Tyler Knox, who we'll see this weekend at eight. Um, and then we get into the blood rounders. Tyler Wells, who was blood rounder last year. Braden Davis, one of two Penn State guys I do not have on the podium yet. Uh, he's also blood round Connor McGonigal, who looks like he's going to miss yet another date. Anthony Noto, who's up from 125. He was third there last year. Braxton Brown of Maryland, Nick Buzakis, Cleveland Belton. And I feel pretty good about, um, not who they start, whether it's Reese Whitcraft or Kale Hughes, but I feel good about either one of those guys winning some matches uh, at NCAs and being on that tier guys that I don't have in, I uh, don't have Unger in right now. I don't have Missouri's Cade Moore in. Um, I don't have Nebraska's Jacob Van D. I don't have Corey land, which I think, <clears throat> I don't think people would expect me to have him in, but I think he's a guy you have to watch out for. Uh, he just beat Cade Moore the other night. Ethan Oakley from North Carolina. I don't have him in quite yet either. Uh, he's a guy that could eventually get in. Want to talk Braden Davis for one minute? I know, I, I know, I don't normally talk Penn State, but for the Penn State fans listening that are thinking Braden Davis is going to AA, he should be up there. Number one, I agree with you, but number two, this is again one of those things where. Braden Davis in dual meets this year is going to wrestle the current top six in the weight. Well, we're going to number one. That's where I was going. He wrestles Ryan Crookham, number one at Lehigh in the duel. So CKLV is going on Friday, Saturday. Right after that, Sunday is Penn State Lehigh, and we hopefully will see Braden Davis versus Ryan Crookham. We're also going to see, as long as everybody wrestles, a couple weeks later, Braden Davis and Asir Bailey. In January, he's going to go against Dylan Shaver, who's number five, Drake Ayala, who's number six, and Dylan Raggison, who's number two. All three of those guys back to back, and then see Lucas Burt and, and Nick Buzakis. Um, so he, he, his schedule this year, again, you're going to see the top six guys. It very much reminds me of, of Josh Barr and his tough schedule. It's going to be fun to see where Braden Davis is against these top guys, and we're not going to have to wait long. He's going to have a one and a three in December, a five and six in January, a two and four in February. So Braden Davis is going to have his shot to see where he is against those top guys. Sure, and for the Penn State fans that are <clears> – the Penn State fans looking at this are probably like – all right, Willie, well, you saw the light and you moved up Van Ness and you moved up Levi and you moved up Carter. Oh, Carter was the other one I moved. I, you know, I, originally my preseason. <laughs> I, <laughs> what, what, originally, what? I said I wanted, I said I wanted to see it. All I know. I, I know. And I saw it and now I'm going to Carter, right? Okay. So, yeah, okay, Willie, now you're coming around for Penn State. But – you're still low balling Braden Davis. You're still low balling Josh Barr. Well, let's see. Let's take a wait and see approach. The schedule will allow it. Hey, the, the Penn State Willie, give me the Braden Davis Ryan Crookham score for this weekend. Crystal ball the score. Uh, uh, 
eight, four, eight, three. Let's see what WrestleStat has it. Comparison for eight, three, two takedowns to zero. All right, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm curious what WrestleStat has it. Two takedowns and a riding time point to zero. You crystal ball it. They have it 5-4, Crookham. What's your projected score? 11-2, Davis. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think... No, I think Crookham wins. Obviously, Crookham has proven himself at that weight. Davis has not proved himself at that weight. No, I think I something say, like 7-4. I will say, though, that Davis could come out... Davis could very well come out and be – Davis is a tough nut to crack because you come in as a true freshman and you're making a pretty good cut to 25 and you still become the Big Ten champ in a pretty loaded weight, a weight with Matt Ramos, a weight with Drake Ayala, Right. two guys that were both in the finals at some point and you win that bracket at big tens, but you wrestled a whole lot of close matches. It's almost like, okay, you got that first year under your belt and now you can breathe and now you can grow and now yeah. you're not cutting weight. And now, you know, you face the gauntlet last year and now you're, expanded now you're wrestling free he he could come out and be a totally different guy and he could be a world beater Braden davis have... absolutely has the ability to win this match sunday but if you're if you're picking it like you got to pick crookham even in a tight one um he, you know what this is a conversation for another show i do want to do some shows where we just kind of they're more opinionated like Without knowing the analysis, it's hard to know, but do you think Penn State is better as an underdog or a favorite? Penn State wrestlers. Like, there's a discussion point I'd love to dive into sometime. Well, frankly, I think they win them both, right? They don't lose matches where they're a favorite too often. And they also probably cause more upsets than anybody else. So in in the comments, oh. in the comments, because I appreciate you guys that were were commenting, responding to the questions in the last show. Comment if you think Penn State wrestlers are better as the underdog or the favorite. But yes, don't miss Penn State Lehigh, two p.m. Eastern on Sunday on Flow. It, it's going to be um, a good duel. WrestleStat has Sheldon Seymour over Luke Lilladol, six <laughs> five. That's where you were talking about it's it's a lack of data. It's not necessarily the most accurate always. Sometimes there is just a lack of data and there's I still I, I cannot stress enough how much I love Russell Stat. I do think the sport is better for it. Also, one other Penn State Lehigh note, we'll get back to, to Crystal Ball. Josh Barr, Michael Beard. Also a great yeah. match in that duel. Yeah. You know, I'm reminded when I do crystal ball, like I get questions about it and like, <clears throat> you know, you could say there's no, there's no data on Luke Lilladal to make you think he's the champ, Willie, what are you doing? But then I'll say, well, I need more data on Braden Davis. And at, at, lit like, listen, I get it at every turn. It sounds like a contradiction. At the end of the day, it's my gut, it's my feelings, and and that's how I view it. Um, I'm reminded of of Matthew Barry does a 100 facts every year before the NFL season, mm -hmm. and he'll often say player A has these stats, player B has these stats, and it, like. Player A stats are really good, and player B stats are really bad, and player C stats are somewhere in the middle. And then he'll go, they're all the same player. You can use the data to bend it any which way to fit your argument, mm -hmm. right? And, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's tough. It's tough. Um, 
you know, like it sounds pretty ridiculous to think to to pick Sheldon Seymour to beat Luke Lillardall. It sounds a little far fetched, right? But Luke Lillardall had an overtime match eight months ago with Matty Lopes, and Sheldon Seymour just beat Matty Lopes by like three or four. Uh, at an open tournament, this at Princeton Open, so you can bend the data whichever way you want. Bend the data. All right. So back to Crystal Ball. Um, I think we covered thirty three this weekend. Also, you're gonna you're gonna see some guys there. So we'll, we'll see where they're at, and then we are gonna see Crookham Crookham Davis. So good weekend for that. Let's move on to one forty one. I don't think you've changed much here. 141, again, like I said, a lot like 33, um, stays pretty static. In my opinion, and I know you include Bo Bartlett in the top tier, in my opinion, it's Andrew Alirez Mendez gunfight. Can Bo upset that? Absolutely. Um, so I have Alirez Mendez 1 and 2 now. Bo Bartlett, the three. Brock Hardy, who was third last year as the four. One change I did make with Anthony Echemendia coming down for 149. I'll tell you right now, there's a lot, a lot of chatter that's not coming from me. I, I, you know, I think that Echemendia will come down. But there's a lot of chatter out there that it's a foregone conclusion. It's not a foregone conclusion. That's what they want to happen. Will it happen? I don't know. I think it will but it's not carved in stone. He very well could stay up. But for now, I have Echemendia down. Um, and at the five spot. Kale Happel, Northern Iowa at the six. Sergio Lemley and Vance Von Bauer, the seven, eight. Guys, just on the outside, Tegan Jameson, Kyle Reen, Vince Cornella, and Josh Edmond. Uh, the round of 16 guys. Josh Coderhant, the EIWA champ last year. Uh, Jordan Titus, Moshe Schwartz, and Sam Latona. Uh, Coderhant, uh, Titus, and Latona all at CKLV. Unfortunately, Kyle Arena and Vince Cornell are not the CKLV. You know, yeah. I, I do. This is not Penn State bias, so spare me that. Bo Bartlett should be right in that conversation with Mendez and Aliras. Not only does he have a win over Mendez, the loss at NCAAs was in the final six seconds. And on yeah. top of that, Bo Bartlett has only lost five matches in the last two years. Yeah, that's insane. I, Bartlett is absolutely right in it with Mendez and the Liras. He absolutely is. He absolutely is. But I don't think it's Mendez and the Liras and then Bo. I think it's a three-way dogfight with the three of them. And I lean whoever – I lean the Big Ten. I think Mendez or Bartlett, I think throughout the season, I think iron sharpens iron, and I do think Aliras is going to be the runner-up. It's just – Well, I mean, you, here's, here's the thing. If you start with a three-headed monster, right? If you start with a three-headed monster, and then one of them beats the other one, you kind of have two left. And Mendez here's, just beat Bartlett two times in a row. Here's the other thing, and I know that recency bias probably skews this, and I'm sure people will comment and tell me where I'm wrong, and that's fine. I don't think history favors the guy who takes the red shirt when you're an Olympic or when you're an NCAA champ, it, or an NCAA finalist even. When you look at Makai Lewis, when you look at Ridge Lovett, I, I don't necessarily think when you have this momentum, you have this success, and then you redshirt, it favors you. If this was two years ago, I, I, I'd lean Aliras over Bartlett, maybe even Mendez. I think Not, Mendez— I, I, don't, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I, I mean, that's a fine theory. I, I don't know the analysis fully on call it— NCAA finalist who take an Olympic red shirt the next year, how do they do the next year? I don't know what that it is, but the guys that I'm thinking of, like Makai Lewis, that have all this momentum, they win NCAAs, and then they take the Olympic red shirt. 
I don't know that it always that it favors them. I comment below or tweet us and let me know who won NCAA Stick Olympic redshirt and came back and and won. And also in a field where you do have you literally have the two returning finalists who were in a dogfight to the final seconds. Mm-hmm. And and Mendez is the clear favorite. He got the best of Bo and you know, they have two very different styles. Bo wrestles a lot of close matches, goes into overtime with guys. He's on paper much better than, and Mendez just beats the piss sure. out of people. So very different wrestlers, but, it, you know, it's not just a Big Ten bias per se. It's So that's why I wanted to kind of build on no, that. No, I think, I think Bo I think Bo is clearly in the mix. I, I'm not saying Bo can't. Um, I'm saying that the pick right now. The pick is probably, Mendez. Probably is Mendez Alirez. No, it's Mendez Bo. I I think. I think you go with the two returning finalists over the guy who just took last year off, who's the clear three, no shadow of a doubt. But I think Alirez is the three after having the year off, and I don't think Alirez has done enough in an off year to overcome the two returning finalists. Fair enough. I can get on board with that. And it, it does stink that Alirez has – we, we talked about with some of these guys in their tough schedules. I don't think Alirez sees a guy in the top 25 until the postseason. Yeah, which is going to leave lingering questions, right? I, I don't know who's at the scuffle. CJ Composto, he just beat 11-2. He's a top 15 guy, but the rest of the season, he doesn't see anybody. Well, he will see. Oh, no. Who's uh, Arizona State? Um, Emilio. Uh, he'll Izzy. see him. He'll see Izagari. He'll see Echemendia. He'll see Teddy Jameson. See, when will he see those guys? Well, a conference. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Postseason. Yeah. Um, hold on. Let's look it up. Let's look up North, Northern... Colorado schedule. See what they have in duels. I mean, you're my favorite right, part but... of Crystal Ball deviating into these random offshoots about guys. <laughs> That's fun. Um, they have Scuffle. They have North Dakota State in the duel. Cal Baptist in the duel. Arizona State in the duel. South Dakota State would be nothing utah valley wyoming they have scuffle Airport. but it's been so dry the last couple of years i mean i don't know who's he gonna see at scuffle and even the thing is even the teams that are there they not often send everybody i mean this is if everybody sent their starter if every team that's entered into the scuffle sent their starter this is what the field would be at 41 Andrew Alirez, Moshe Schwartz, Sam Latona, Todd Carter, Isaiah Powell. So even if he goes to scuffle, not like a lot of question marks get answered. Yeah. So you know what's going to happen. It's going to be Alirez. Alirez is going to get the one seed if Bo and Mendez split or take a loss, take a wonky loss to somebody that unexpected, or he's going to be the two because he doesn't have the strength, he doesn't have enough wins, right? So I don't think. Be the one. Yeah, I don't think Bartlett or Mendez will lose to anybody but each other this year. So I definitely think if, like, if Mendez, if Mendez wins in the duel in Big Tens, that's gonna. I mean, unless just so then you'd have Mendez one and a Bo Alirez two three. <laughs> that's yeah. A clear better side of the bracket is the one without with the one of those guys instead of two. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but not a lot of changes at 41, but we did manage to find some good golden nuggets to talk about with the Lyra's moving on to 49. Let me pull that on. 49. The I made a change, a big change. And that is moving Shane Van Ness up. And, you know, anytime <clears throat> you make a change, a significant change at the top, uh, you feel as if you're sort of disrespecting somebody. And I, it sort of feels disrespectful to Caleb Henson, who is returning national champ at the weight, hasn't lost. I just think 
I just think that Shane Van Ness's arsenal right now is insane. And I think he looks improved on top. Now, Ridge is a real tough cookie on top as well. Um, I, I have Van Ness one, Henson two, Love it three. And I think, I don't know. How do you think, well, let me read them off. Van Ness one, Henson, Virginia Tech two, returning national champ. Ridge Love it. Was six, but he was the one seed and has a win over Henson last year at CKLV Finals. Parco at four, returning fifth. He beat Lovett last year. I have Cannon Webster, a freshman, as my five. Ty Waters, who was fourth, I have at six. Lachlan McNeil, an AA at 141 last year. I have him seven. I have Panera Johnson coming down from 57 as my final guy on the podium. Chance Lamer, Ty Whalen, Dylan D'Amelio, Jordan Williams as my blood round losers. Uh, in my top 16, Jaden Abbas, Cross Wislewski, a good-looking freshman from Penn, Jesse Vasquez of Arizona State, and Carter Young of Oklahoma State. How do you – I mean, I, I clearly see Van Ness and Henson as finalist contenders. I see Love It as a guy that could do it. Like head don't explode it. If he if he beats Henson, if he beats Van Ness, I mean he's beaten Henson before. Uh he's outplaced Van Ness before. Um so I see, and Ridge has all the tools. Neutral, top, bottom. So I don't think it's a surprise if Ridge would get it done. But even though Ridge, like, lost to Parco, even though, like, Henson lost to a Jackson Arrington, I don't think you can pick anybody outside of Van Ness, Henson, or Lovett. It's funny because I think when I look at this, I, I totally agree with you that regardless of, of the order, I would put Van Ness and Henson as a 1A, 1B, and I would put Lovett and Parco as a 2A, 2B. Whichever way you put those two in those two groups, I don't think matters. I think couple Van Ness and what he's doing and with the Penn State coaching in March, I think he's right there. Henson has proven that he can win the whole damn thing. And then you have Lovett and Parco who have the talent, but in March have struggled. You know, when it comes down to the end of the season, even Parco, last year he beat Lovett 3-1, but he lost... He got pinned by Ty, uh, Ty Waters, and he lost to uh, Austin Gomez. So both Lovett and Parco are kind of who, those two way two B. Who love it beat a couple times by a wide margins? Yeah. So I I think sincerely those top four guys you have can all absolutely win it, especially with how Parco's looking this year. He he's impressing me for sure. Um, but I like Van Ness and Henson. I think that's right. Um, obviously, I'm a, I'm a Penn State guy. I'm not going to push back on you putting Van Ness one. But in the rest of it, I, really I agree interested. with two. I'm really interested in um, Cannon Webster as well. Uh, that kid's a whiz. Um, and maybe it's too soon, right? He's a freshman. Maybe it's too soon. Mm -hmm. to count him or expect him um, to make a final. But I really think – I really think you could be looking at a future finalist. Um, and so I'm interested in how his season goes. I agree with you. I, I'm bullish too on Panero Johnson and what he can do the rest and of the Here's year. a guy too that you got to keep an eye on. Ty Whalen I have in the blood round for Princeton – why people aren't talking about him is beyond me. I picked him up in my fantasy league in the offseason or last year. Do you know what he did at Midlands last year? He beat Parco and Ty Waters. Yes. He beat Parco and Ty Waters, who both podiumed. Pick him up. Fun fact, he's never lost a college match. He was 10-0 last year. Oh, no, sorry, in 2023, yeah. 
He yeah. So I'm talking he, last two years. Sorry, ten o last year, nine o this year. Yeah, yeah. He wrestled as a true freshman last year. He did a gap year, like a gray shirt year, an Ivy gray shirt, and uh, went undefeated. Yep, yep. Yeah, I didn't look at his freshman year, so sorry, guys that are screaming right now. He was um, punching air. He was a Fargo runner up. I mean, he was a big time recruit. Let's look what I have him. Let's look what I have him on the big board while you pull up 157. So he would have been here, Waylon. He was number 43. I mean, that's pretty Top good. 50. Yeah. All right, pulling up 157. 157. I go with Ja'Cory Teamer, and a lot of you guys might be saying, well, he just pulled his hamstring. Who knows if he's even going to come back? And if he comes back, is he going to be <laughs> – Trained up enough. Is he going to come back in time to be optimized? Well, what's your other option? Meyer? Meyer who gets concussed every two weeks? You're rolling the dice there too. Not only on being healthy but and being prepared, but also he could get an injury at any time. So then you go Kasich. And Kasich was third at 49 last year. He had a win over Keller in the All-Star Classic. Um, I'm just not ready to make that jump yet with a guy as with a guy as big as Jacory is, with a guy as talented as Meyer is. Um, can Kasich beat either one of those guys? Wouldn't make my head fall off, but I'm not ready to pick it yet. So I got Teamer 1, still Shapiro 2, Kasich 3, Keller 4. Ryder Downey, I love, like I was saying about Braden Davis. I was saying about Braden Davis. Freshman, go through the gauntlet, show a lot of promise. Huge jump, year 1 to year 2. That's how I like Ryder Downey too. I think he's a full package. Um, good in all positions. Funky, scrambly. Good on top. I like him to make a jump. Blood round last year. I have him fifth this year. Ed Scott, AA two years ago. Blood round last year. I have him sixth. Antrell Taylor was eighth at 165 last year. I have him seventh this year. Um, not ready to put him above Scott or Downey yet. Although I could see Taylor. You know, you get into this tier here where I could see Taylor as high as three or four, I could also see him as a blood round guy um, or a round of 16 guy even. Um, I mean, I have Vinny Zerbin in my round of 16 right now. Vinny Zerbin at one time last year was ranked number one in the country. Right? I think that's who we were talking about a couple weeks ago. We were talking about seasons and, and rankings. and who did Who did Antrell lose to? In U-20 finals. Antrell lost to a Penn State guy in U-20 finals. No, he didn't. He lost to Meyer, right? I don't know. He lost to Meyer. Yeah, at 70 kg, Meyer lost. uh, Antrell lost to Meyer in the U-20 finals. And, And I think the U.S. Open, the Junior Open finals. So I was trying to connect dots between um, Kasich and and Antrell, but Kasich was 65 kg and Antrell was 70. But it is interesting that something to keep an eye on is Antrell wrestled 65 last year because P-Rob was at 57, right? But Mm -hmm. P-Rob got beat by Ryder Downey. P-Rob got beat by... Well, no, he didn't get beat by Ed Scott. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if Taylor can. It'd be interesting if Taylor 
could actually place higher than P. Rob did a year ago. Tommy Askey is really interesting um, at the eight spot as well. Uh, had a really great year for App State last year. Beat Cody Chittum early on. Finished in the blood round. Um, and my blood round guys are Patty Gallagher, Chase Saldate, Joey Blaze, and Cody Chittum. I have Cody Chittum getting the lineup for ASU if Pinero and Etchemendia drop. Vinny Zerbin, I may be lowballing. Um, he had a great year last year. Didn't wrestle the toughest of schedules, but he was ranked number one in the country. But at NCAAs, he went one and two. And... You know, there's a fine line there between people that want to say, yeah, told you Vinny Zerbin was overrated. He should have never been ranked number one or never been ranked top five. And I can prove it because he only went one and two at NCAAs. Um, let's split the middle there. Was he overranked at one or top five? Probably. Is he... Better than a one and two guy at NCAAs? Absolutely. So let's not get it twisted. Sometimes good guys go one and two, three and two, two and two. Sometimes good guys have not a great weekend on the final weekend. I mean, case in point, Facundo the other year, he was better than a one and two guy, two and two guy, right? Absolutely. Um, and it's also a way different weight than last year with a lot of a lot of guys graduating. Um, so. Vinny Zerbin, I have around a 16. That might be low for him. Also, Easton Miller up a couple weights or up a weight. I think he's going to be very good this year for Maryland. Raphael Hippolito is a freshman from Virginia Tech that I think presents a difficult out for a lot of guys. And Ethan Styles, Nebraska transfer, now at Oregon State, freshman who um, pushed Antrell to overtime a couple weeks ago. What do you like? What do you don't like here, Justin Bash? 157 is such a question mark weight. You know, is Teamer healthy? Will Shapiro, who's had concussions, will he get healthy and wrestle? Kasich, he's got that dog in him. Lost last year, first round at NCAAs, and then rattled off seven straight as a true freshman to take third. Peyton Keller's looked great. Ryder Downey has looked great. Ed Scott, he was blood round, then he was fifth, then he was blood round. Can he get back to the podium? Antrell Taylor, like you said, he, he's young. What can he do? ASCII, Minnesota has looked very great lately. Very great. And then you have these guys, especially the four in the blood round, Patty Gallagher, Chase Seldate, Joey Blaze, Cody Chittum. All four of those guys can absolutely AA if they string together some great wins and continue to develop. This is just one of the biggest weights with, with a question mark. I think out of all 10 weights, 125 is obviously always chaos, but man, 157 this year is just such a question mark. I mean, look at the guys in the blood round um, that I have. Uh, their pedigree is really interesting because a lot of times we, we get hooked on um, – we get spoiled with, oh, they were ranked top 10 on your big board. That pretty much means immediate success. But sometimes It's not always that way. It's not always like if you don't come out guns blazing, you're not that guy. Patty Gallagher was arguably the number one recruit uh, of his class. He still has a lot of potential. He could mm -hmm. surely break into the top five at this weight. Chase Saldate has been, you know, he had a bad NCAAs last year, but he was overtime with Levi last year. Joey Blaze won Super 32 in a weight that had number one and number two in the country, but failed to, but he also had a bad NCAA tournament last year. Cody Chittum, arguably the number one prospect in his grade when he graduated uh, one and two. So there's a lot of these high pedigree guys that are just on the cusp and they could break through and chase sell date you know it's always fun to watch these guys transfer and see can they get that extra edge chase sell date obviously spent four years in michigan state this off season with he took his COVID year he transferred to michigan and he you know peyton keller i just said how good he's looked they went into ot last month it was right. a 6-3 win for for keller that could have went either way 
So Saldate has looked good, and that's his only blemish this year as an overtime loss to a top five guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 157 is very interesting and, and and really unlike other weights. Um, there's no defending champ here. There's no guy coming off red shirt that wasn't a champ a couple years ago. right? There's no Andrew Alirez. There's no Parker Kekaisen, Carter Starachi, right? There's no – nobody – none of these guys have done it before. So, well, Teamer is a returning finalist. I, I am curious. Um, I assume you're, you're – for those people not connecting dots, I'm assuming you're sliding Chittam in here at 57 because of the moves where you're. We were talking about it. Etchemendia going from 49 to 41, Panera going from 57 to 49. So for those that, people who right. are looking at looking at rankings and talking about you know Cliff Keen this weekend and then here, that's kind and of that's why another- there's that disconnect. That's another, yeah, that's that's precisely what's happening. And that's partial rumors, partial intel, partial speculation. But that's another... Uh-oh, did we lose him? And he's gone. All right, we'll give it a minute. He'll be back. There he is. You He's lose me back. for a second? I okay. lost you for a second, but you're back. You were talking about uh, speculation. Yeah, I think that's another that's another reason why Crystal Ball is sort of superior to regular rankings because I can make that change now, mm-hmm. right? If I think that Wrestler X is going to drop, if I think Wrestler X is going to move up, if I, frankly, if I know that Wrestler X is too injured, right? There's no reason for me to move him out of the fourth place, but I, but like on his record, but I know he's walking wounded. I ain't picking him to place high. If re- in regular rankings, you can't do that. And crystal ball, it can be reflected. And that's what I'm doing right now. So it gives you um, a lot. It gives you a vision where what, if this happens, what does it look like? What does it look like team race wise? What does it look like at the composition at each weight? Yeah. All right, 165. Let me pull it up here on screen for the visual watchers. The visual watchers. Uh, pretty chalk. Mezenbrink, Caliendo at one and two. That was the same. Uh, Julian Ramirez still at three. I know he lost to Max Brignola. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Julian loses some weird matches. He's also beaten guys like David freaking Carr and Quincy freaking Monday. Okay? I'm not giving up on Julian Ramirez because he lost a match in late November. Um, Peyton Hall at four. He was seventh last year. Hunter Garvin at five. I had a Terrell Barraclaw who just beat him. Yes, I know. He just beat him. I still like Hunter Garvin a touch better uh, right now. I mean, Garvin dang near beat Caliendo. Barraclaw at six, Mantanona seven, true freshman. I can't believe Brock Mantanona's, I mean, I can believe it, but this is a true freshman who, he wrestled like 144 or 150 last year. He's all the way up at 165, and he's wrestling really well. I like him. And then I have another freshman, uh, Braden Scholes from Illinois. Um, now, the big... The next this three that one, you got in Blood Round, I, I can't wait to hear some explanations. Uh-oh. Are you calling me out on it? Sammy Sasso. Here's my Blood Round, guys. Sammy Sasso. MJ Gatton, who was Blood Round last year. Cam Amin, who did All-American before and was Blood Round last year. And Nico Ruiz, a redshirt freshman. My round of 16 guys are Will Miller, Andrew Sparks, Cam Steed, and Max Mayfield. What are your questions, Justin Bash? It's really more of a testament to the guys that you did pick to AA here than the guys that you pick not to. Um, I, obviously, the biggest one, Cam Amin has All-American before, you know, but this season I'll agree that if I had to slot him somewhere right now, I'm putting him in the blood round as well. Um, Sammy Sasso, really the big question mark here, 
this is where too i don't want to toot your horn because way too many people do that and and yeah <laughs> we, we don't need to do that but no, do you all. are as much of a sammy sasso guy as there is and here you're calling it like you see it not what you want to happen i think if you had to pick somebody to win this weight like emotion wise i'm rooting for somebody you might not admit it, but you're probably leaning Sammy Sasso. I love and, Sammy Sasso. And here's I'd love the to guy. See him win a title. And here's the guy who you picked blood around after he was fifth, no second, fifth, second, and now you're you're saying he's going to fail to AA this year. I, I'm curious as to the logic and reasoning. He's up two weights, and he got shot. He got shot. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how well he can even move, you know? Sure. And so skill, pedigree, dog. And Sammy Sasso's a dog, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no questions. If Sammy Sasso was a 149-pounder and he made the finals and lost to Yanni and then – the next year he came up to 165, I would say, okay, let's see how he adjusts to 65, but he's going to be in contention. He's going to be minimum four or five. If you do that, the same thing, after you've been shot, I got more questions. <laughs> Yeah, that no. That's I don't a know fair how analysis. well he can move. I don't know what his mobility is. I don't know what his gas tanks like. Uh, wrestling skill, hunger, fight, resourcefulness. Yeah, he got all the skills. That's that's a very fair analysis. Um, I mean, listen, I love Braden Skulls. I love Terrell Bearclaw. I love Hunter Garvin. It's Sammy Sasso is a better wrestler than all of them. And it's not debatable. But shot Sammy Sasso is different. So I need to see it. Shot Sammy Sasso is different. There's the headline, the title for today's show. Bash Mania, Bash in the Brain, episode 256. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the headline. All right. Yeah, the rest of this weight, uh, I think, is pretty pretty straightforward, pretty chalk. Let's move on to 174. Ooh. 174. I moved Levi Haynes ahead of Keegan O'Toole. That is a change from last time. Um, Levi, I think Levi got a couple things going for him. I think... I was concerned, would Levi be a full 74? I think he's f fine. I think he's going to be as... He's a hoss. I think he's going to be as energized as ever. And I love Chase Saldate, right? I lo like, I've known him since he was a pup. I know his, his father's awesome. <clears throat> the fact that Levi struggled with Chase Saldate in a duel last year tells you everything to know about how much weight he was cutting. Okay. Levi at 74 is going to be big. He's going to be more energetic. He's going to be more offensive. And that is scary. That is scary. And he did beat Keegan O'Toole already in freestyle. And I think, I think for Keegan, I mean, you know, sometimes you try to do these assessments and you look, too hard into things um for keegan like he's back for his sixth year he's getting married he's building a house is he as motivated and as hungry as levi who's moving up a weight and question himself like People are doubting me. Can I move up two weights and still get it done? I just think the motivation factor is on Levi's side. Mm -hmm. Three through eight, I got Dean Hamidi, who's looked really good. He's also up a weight. I mean, look, you got the top three guys are all moving up. 
Haynes up away. No, Haynes up two, Keegan O'Toole up one, Dean Hamidi up one. Uh, at the four slot, I have Kennedy or Brands, whoever they roll out. Um, I love you know, that. You're, four... you're only this or that. Put them, slot them in the exact same, regardless of who they send. You don't you see know, that it, too it, often. No, you don't. And and um, I think 99% of the time, if it was wrestler A, you'd slot them somewhere. And wrestler B, you'd slot them another place. But... That's truly where I see him. I think that I would take Kennedy over Wolak, and I, I I would take Brands over Wolak, but I would take neither over Hamidi, right? So I, that's legitimately where I see them um, both. Um, Wolak at the five, he was six last year. Devos at the five, he was six last year. Uh, Pinto moving down from 184 where he was a blood round guy. I have him seven and Nico and Contrera. He was round of 16 last year. If you ever looked at Nico and Contrera's wins, look at his resume. Uh, look at his win loss ledger. Uh, he's right there. You know what? This way is crazy. I have Nico and Contrera eighth. He's from Blair Academy. I have Lorenzo Norman blood round. He's from Blair Academy. I have Danny Wask blood round. He's from Blair Academy. A lot of Blair kids here. Uh, also, Carson Karsla, huge question mark for me. Um, talent, sure. Pedigree, wins, everything. But injury concern. I also have Simon Ruiz, true, not true freshman. A redshirt freshman for Cornell. Gavin Sachs, who I have listed as North Dakota State, erroneously, he is at Oklahoma. Got to change that. Jared Sima was blood round last year. How about Jared Sima last year at NCAAs? You can sort of kind of say he blew it against Shane Griffith. Yeah. Never thought I'd say those words, but he kind of did. Alex Creamer from Central Michigan has been wrestling really well. And Garrett Thompson, my final round of 16 guy. What do you think? Um... What was your opinion coming into the season, Levi O'Toole? Coming into the season, Levi always impresses me. He impressed me at the trials. He At the World Team Trials, he looked like an absolute yeah. hoss. So I didn't really have a question mark about the size of him. My bigger question mark was how is Keegan O'Toole going to look up a weight? O'Toole hasn't looked like he's improved that much from last season. O'Toole can absolutely go out and win this thing. He's one of the best wrestlers in college wrestling. But I think yeah. I think Levi, this might be Penn State bias. I really don't care what people think. Uh, Penn State coaches have Penn State wrestlers more prepared in March seemingly than any other school, and that's been a fact over the last 10 years. So if you're talking about a guy like Levi, who's the returning national champ, and he's not just coming up and there's a question mark of the size of him, I mean, that's a tall tale sign for how I think he's going to do if the returning national champ comes up and looks like the weight is perfect for him. And I, and I think this is yeah. one of those weights, too, where you have a 1A, 1B, and a 2A, 2B, where I think... Haynes and O'Toole are a clear 1A, 1B, and I think Amity and then Brands or Kennedy, because uh, I agree. I think they're both Kennedy and Brands could, could really do the same thing. I, I'd slot them in as a different tier above Wolak, Devos, Pinto, and Contreras. Yeah. So th this weight, yeah. You know what's interesting, too, about, to me, the dynamic between Levi and Keegan is motivation i think motivation is a big thing and something it's one it's those intangibles that you can't put your finger on and this is why mm -hmm. yeah if you look at facundo levi <coughs> at the olympic trials and facundo beats him two takedowns to zero and what did i say just after that just after that happened i said Le Levi just cut his balls off to make 157. He wins another title. Five minutes later, he's going to YOLO it to enter the Olympic trials 
at 74 kilograms, and he's just been through the ringer, right? He's just been through the ringer. He just sucked his guts out. He just won a title. Now he's going to Olympic trials where almost everybody else in the field had that date circled on their calendar for four years, right? Yeah. And just Levi's probably played out. He's probably just like, oh, let me just get a rest, okay? So that's what I'm talking about, motivation. And I, I said, don't take too much away from Facundo beating Levi. Well, if we're giving Levi that grace... Can't we give the same sort of grace to Keegan? Like, how much was he all in on the non-Olympic world weight trials? Right? Oh, 100%. 100% maybe, he just maybe, he was like, you know, I'll give it a whirl, but I'm not going to slip my wrist if I don't make this team. Right? You know, like, maybe he's a totally different guy, and he's circling March, and he's like, um... My final year, it could be versus a returning champ as well in, in Levi Haynes. I am going to outclass him. I'm going to school him. I'm going to win this match. And he wins. We should not be surprised. Keegan O'Toole is that good. And so there's these intangible. But then again, he like I said, he could be a six-year senior saying, whatever, I'm riding off into the sunset. <laughs> I'm getting a job. Well, and that's why I said there are – and that's why I say it's a 1A, 1B. I mean, listen, if you're a Mizzou fan, if you're an anti-Penn State fan, if you're whatever that wants to find a reason to put O'Toole over Levi, I'll do it for you. He's only got four losses in four yeah. years of college wrestling. His NCAA finishes are third, first, first, third. He's had – he's he's yeah. slid under the radar, in my opinion, as one of the greatest collegiate careers you can have. When you're a two-time NCAA champ with two third-place finishes, I mean, and 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 so far this year he's eight and zero, hundred percent bonus. So I think it's more of a, you know, surprise, not surprise, but there was a question mark with Levi coming up, and it's like, wow, Levi looks great coming up to weight. O'Toole just picks up where he left off last year, and he's come up and he's eight and zero, the hundred percent bonus. So. That's why I say they're one A one B, hundred percent. I agree. I agree too. And um, you know, about the disrespect thing I said earlier with Caleb Henson. I mean, same thing, kind of. And it was the same thing with Parker and and Carter. And it's same thing here. I mean, this you don't want to. I don't want it to be disrespectful. Keegan O'Toole, who's had one of the greatest freaking careers ever. Mm -hmm. Um. And maybe I'm falling victim to recency, but Levi's just, it looked great, you know? Yep. It's one of those gut things. All right. Let's, uh, let's move on to 184. Let's see here. Let's pull it up. There right, it is. Yet another Penn Stater going one, um, a change. I changed Lillard out of one. I changed Van Ness to one. I changed Levi to one, and I changed Carter to one. I originally had Parter, uh, Parker Keckeisen, um, returning national champ at 184, as my number one guy. Carter coming up a weight. I said I wanted to see it at All-Star Classic. We've seen it. And though it was really close, Carter – was very impressive in a one takedown match. And uh, I think, I think if Carter is that in November, um, he'll be that in March. Cause that kid's a, you know, not that Parker Kekheisen or anybody else isn't, but Carter gets done every March. So I got Carter one, P Keck two, Dustin plot three. We could see Kekheisen plot, which was last year finals. We could see that at CKLV this week. I have Gabe, Gabe Arnold. Um, Sort of the the next tier, um, of course, it is in flux if Gabe will stay at 84, if Gabe will go down to 87. I tend to think I tend to think that Gabe Arnold is going to stay at 84. And I know that Gabe Arnold has made public statements before. I said Gabe should go at 84 last year. And he said, no, I'm a 74-pounder. 
and now he's wrestling 84. Uh, I think things change, and I don't think that, you know, Gabe is was disingenuous last year. I think I, I think a year changed, and I think he's at 84, and I think he looks great and comfortable, and um, I think it's a really great weight, a really healthy weight for him. Uh, and I have him four, and I believe Plot beat him last year. Uh, kind of handily, but um, five one. Right, but uh, you know it's a new year, and and Gabe was in between seventy four, eighty four then. Um, not that I think, not that I think, not that I would pick Gabe to beat Plot, but I, to, it wouldn't be out of the question to me. Uh, I still have TJ Stewart. I went to TJ Stewart. I still have him at number five. This is the beauty. This is why I love Crystal Ball because you can take him out for all. You guys want to take him out? You guys want to drop him? Drop him? I'm keeping him in there. I think he's a handful of problems when he gets his lungs back, and he will get his lungs back. Chris Foca, I have at six for Cornell Bennett Berge ahead of Max McAnelly seven eight. Yes, I know McAnelly just beat him. That's where I have him at in the tiers, though. Um, I got Silas Allred, uh, Blood Rounder last year at ninety seven at eighty four. Jackson Smith, also coming down from 97. I have him blood round. Colton Hawks, Dylan Fishback round out my blood round, guys. Round of 16, guys. Jaden Bullock, Edmund Ruth, who hasn't looked too sharp this year. Um, so, he, you know, I had him higher. He drops a tier. Ryder Rogoski, DJ Parker from Oklahoma. Yeah, a lot pretty of room. For, wait, pretty right? straightforward and a lot of, lot of room for guys to grow and prove themselves. You're talking TJ Stewart. You know, you're talking Bennett Berge. These guys have so much upside that I think you've put them. You, I think you've given them a good amount of credit. Like these guys are gonna are gonna prove themselves throughout the year and in March. And, and still, there's a lot of guys in here that also could do the same. Silas Allred comes to mind. Dylan Fishback. You know, Edmund Ruth. We, we freaking won Big Tens last year. But yeah, yeah. And you know what's interesting too is. Carter Starachi, Parker Kekeisen, Dustin Plott, Chris Foca. Four of my top six graduate. Wow. You know, so the, the kind of freshman, sophomore, like TJ Stewart, Gabe Arnold, Max McAnelly is just a freshman. Um, Dylan Fishback, just a sophomore. They're going to be the next, right? They're, after this year, you could see a big – that tier jumps. They're going to be the next guys contending for titles. This is a weight, too, that, you know, some of these weights, that it feels like they're going to kind of work themselves out throughout the year. This is one of those weights that I'm not sure a lot's going to change throughout the year where you have yeah. a four-time national champ, Carter, the one who doesn't see a lot of the other guys – here the rest of the year you got parker who i think is going to stay number two no matter what happens you got plot who i think is going to stay just under parker you got gabe arnold who i don't think is going to be you know any of those top three guys this is one of those weights where it's like kind of evenly divided amongst conferences and schedules where i don't yeah. think you're going to see a lot of movement throughout the rest of the year when it comes to like a crystal ball like this yeah that's a really good point like uh there's weights like 125 157 197 you can see a lot of movement. This one, the makeup of the weight is such that they're in these buckets that there might be a l You don't see anybody jumping to tiers. They're going to stay right. in their tier, right? Yeah, I agree. Good point. Um, 197. 197, I said there could be a lot of movement. Um, and here we go. Stephen Buchanan, I have number one returning – uh, third last year, Jacob Cardenas returning fourth as your number two. AJ Ferrari, the enigma that is. I have him number three, and Rocky Elam. I think I had three before, and I dropped. I I really think Rocky Elam is banged up. I, I think he's banged up good. Or he is. He had he... something lingering, or had an exist had an injury. That was such that they are like, let's limit his dates. So I, it's, well, it's something so I think is going on with Rocky. Rocky had a couple surgeries, and he's yeah. just recovering slowly. Um, he'll be back soon. He's. I, I talked to him the other day. 
Um, he's a big Chiefs fan. Shout out Rocky. He's such a great kid. He congratulated me on the Bills win. I only sent him the Josh Allen touchdown run against the Chiefs set to the Titanic a couple times. Um, because I love Rocky. He's one of the best kids in wrestling, in, in college wrestling. I love him. Great family. Um, and I said, dude, when are you getting out there? When are you getting out there? And he said, soon. I want to get. I want to. I want to be back out there. So he'll be back. He was very excited to see how Aiden Sinclair is performing in his absence. Um, so he he should be back soon. Good. Good. Um. Yeah, and we'll see. We'll see where he's at. Uh, at his peak, he could win this weight for sure. Mm-hmm. Um. But there's a little bit question marks about, you know, where he is right now because he's been on the shelf. There's questions about Ferrari. Hasn't had the toughest of schedules in the last – hasn't wrestled a whole lot of matches in the last three years. Um, There's questions about Salazar, who I have at five, AA last year at um, 184. And the old question, right? Are you going to be better now that you're not cutting weight? Or are these – are you – not big enough yet and I, I like Salazar's skills I like his fight I like his toughness and I think he's going to be just fine so I still I still have him on the podium even up away Stephen Little number six was seventh last year Michael Beard was eighth last year I have him seven I had a Trey Munoz who was third at 84 now uh Munoz I still have eight ahead of Cerber who just beat Munoz and I have server in my blood round. I have uh, Glazier in the blood round, Christian Carroll in their blood round, Josh Barr in the blood round, uh, Christian Carroll and Barr sort of, they're not the same wrestler by any stretch of the imagination, but to me, they're sort of in the same category in that they are red shirt freshmen in a weight class that is full of seniors and they are new to the weight. They're not just they're not just freshmen in a weight with a ton of seniors. They're freshmen in a weight with a ton of seniors that are proven, and they are new to the weight. Bar coming up, Carroll coming down. Um, so there's questions they have to answer the bell uh, before I move them up. Uh, round of sixteen guys: Zach Bronigal, John Posnanski, Max Stout, and Wyatt Volker. Go ahead, say it. Are you expecting, um, are you expecting bar, bar pushback? Yeah. No, listen, bar is going to have his, his chance to, um, prove himself. There's, there's no doubt about that. I'm not worried about that until he gets some of these matches. I'll say this because bar needs to prove himself. He has no big wins in college. It's very hard to gauge where he is right now. I'm bullish on him, but I'm, I'm biased. I will say this. If AJ Ferrari does not wrestle this weekend, I would consider bumping him down to four or five. Now, it's tough to do because if I would bump him down because really I think he, if he doesn't wrestle this weekend, I don't know that he's going to, I think he drops two matches in NCAAs. So a fourth or fifth place finish, kind of one in the same, depending on where he is in the bracket. Now, he might have a high seed because if he goes undefeated because he doesn't really wrestle that many good guys this year, it's going to be interesting. But Ferrari had such an impressive season his first year. I mean, he he had wins when he won NCAAs, the true freshman, over younger Bastida, Nino Bonacorsi, Miles Amin, Jacob Warner, Tanner Sloan, Stephen Buchanan. He, he's not getting the feel for the top guys. And if he doesn't wrestle this weekend, I question that's what, been he's, my, what he's going to do. That's been my whole thing. That's been my thing the entire time. People coming back and they're going to immediately slot in. What's your expectation for AJ Ferrari? Well, he'll win it. He's beaten all these guys before. He hasn't felt these types. He's literally not put his hand on anybody that's remotely a contender, but one time in the last two and a half years, and that was Zach Glazier, who we went to overtime with, Mm -hmm. right? So I am being conservative with it. Um, That being said, I don't know how anybody, I don't know how you can say, yeah, I'm in on Ferrari after all this time, I'm still in a Ferrari, 
because he's that good. But if he doesn't wrestle this weekend, then I'm sort of out on him because he didn't have data before. How does he have data now? Mm -hmm. So, um, I hope he wrestles. I don't just his, his, uh, by the way, my, my problem to, to finish my thought, I forgot where I was going. Even bumping, I think he's going to finish fourth or fifth. If he doesn't wrestle this weekend, it doesn't get some of these best guys and, and see some stuff here. The problem is I don't know who to put above him because you have Elam right, who's right. still you have Elam, Elam still recovering, still and then you got like can can Ferrari even if he's even if he's eighty five percent beat Celzar Little Beer? I think so, but that's I think so too. That's the tough part about my gut is if he doesn't wrestle, moving down to four or five. The harder part is who do you put above him at three? That's right. A hundred percent agree. 100% agree. All right. Um, so, lastly, um, the rest of 197, I think, is pretty straightforward. I think guys like Glazier and Serber and Carroll and Barr, you know, they're going to prove themselves and see where they're at over the next month or so. So, it's kind of like, you know, I think those blood round guys at 97, Glazier, Serber, Carroll, Barr, I, I think they absolutely could AA. Absolutely. But they got to kind of prove it, I think. Especially with Barr debuting at 97 um, after being at 74 and, and coming up. Christian Carroll coming down 60 pounds. Cerber, Cerber was a heavyweight too, right? Cerber was I, a heavyweight at one I point, think, yeah. didn't Ferrari, yeah, Ferrari, they had a match, but it, it was a medical forfeit. Cerber medical forfeit, but they wrestled. Um, they were both. At heavyweight back then. I mean, you know, the server was kind of like a no. Sorry, that was it. You know, server, server the, was I mean, at ninety seven when they wrestled. Never mind. Um. All right. So two eighty five. Yeah, the biggest news probably was that Gable Stevenson, since the original preseason crystal ball came out, Gable Stevenson announced his return. Um. And. You know, in conversely to AJ Ferrari. Gable Stevenson, he's been active enough, right? He won a couple tournaments. One of them was called the Olympics. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Gable doing what he did internationally, um, it's a little different story than than AJ Ferrari. So I slot him in ahead of reigning national champ Greg Kirkfleet and Wyatt Hendrickson. Um, I still have Younger Bastida in four. We'll see what his availability is um, for Iowa State. Fulton Schultz, fifth. I know some people don't like that because Schultz has taken some losses. Tay Gadiali, sixth. Nick Feldman, seven. Also, Feldman, uh, not looking. Some people, you know, I think the people are like, uh, oh, Feldman's the next Gable. And then, oh man, Feldman doesn't look so good. So he's been sort of roller coaster ride. Um, Isaac Trumbull at eight rounds out the podium. My blood round guys are Slavikuski, Treffen, who's now at Lehigh after transferring from NC State, Dayton Pitzer, and freshman Jimmy Mullen uh, of Virginia Tech, who just lost in overtime to Slavikuski. Luckman, Heinzelman, Keeter, and Nevels, my R16 guys. And I think, you know, maybe some Iowa guys are like, uh, hey, Keter's too low, around a 16, but these are all veterans, and they're all enormous guys. And um, Keter's still, like, walking around at, like, 225. Still not. I know. I, I think Ooh. Keter I think Keter can AA. It's just who do you take out, you know? And maybe it's a uh, – you know, I, I said when we were previewing Cliff Keen that I think Schultz is a perennial fourth, fifth-place guy. And maybe Keter takes him out in the quarters or something – you know, and, and that's how he gets in. Or maybe he takes out Tay. Like, I don't know. It's 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 one of those things where some of these guys, even Slava Kuski, I think he could AA. Keter could AA. Um, but you do have such a solid senior veteran um, top eight. And it's like it's tough to move those guys out at this point. Now, yeah. I do think, yeah. you know, there there's whispers. Will Iowa State redshirt younger? between being banged up and wanting to get healthy, do they, I mean, listen, in this, in this gamified era of college wrestling, 
Do I let all these seniors graduate and bring Younger back next year as arguably a clear number one, depending on what happens? Put, put the put the graphic back up. See those guys right there? You know who graduates? One, two, three, five, six. If Younger redshirts, he comes back and he's clear number one. Yeah, and if he's not healthy... This is that's the biggest thing right now. Younger is not a hundred percent, and if you're not a hundred percent, and you can get the excuse, get get some rationale for a medical red shirt, and come back next year, as long as you don't mind sticking around a college campus for another year, why would you not? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I um, think everything else is, is pretty straightforward here. It is. It is because with with the amount of seniors you have in there and that, and it goes beyond that. Right. So, um, the first six are all seniors, including younger, right? I mean, they're all in their last year of eligibility pending medicals or something like that. Right. So there's six, the first six, then you go Slavikuski and Treffin. So now you're looking at eight of the top 10. Then you got mm-hmm. Luffman, Heinzelman and Nevels. You're talking about 11 of the top 16 are all gone. Mm -hmm. So when you have that kind of four-year, five-year incumbents, um, you know, frankly, the data tells you, gives you everything, right? You know who these guys are. These are the tiers. Um, Not a whole lot of surprises, but uh, that's, that's heavyweight. Um, the team race gets a little interesting. Uh, Penn State, um, you know, kind on a tier of their own at 166, but that's pretty much getting close to max because you got one with Lilladal, and that's totally speculative. Mm-hmm. You got one with um, Van Ness. 150, 150, 149, Van Ness. 165, 174, 184. Um, you know, you're getting getting pretty close to max. And, you know, you got well, that's two also at heavyweight, with, three at 57. That is, I, I think, max on likely on the champs. But you, you do have two guys who are very capable, I think, of AAing. That would be the big difference from a max standpoint, I think. Well, yeah, if you're talking about everybody, everybody makes the finals. It was just no, not finals. Makes the finals. I mean, what's the point differential if Braden and Barr AA? If Braden takes fifth, that point goes up like uh, five. And then what if Barr takes sixth? Same, because I have them both in the blood round with four points. So. Um, the sort of big one would be like, like the big one would be right now in my f- formula, little doll's getting 22 points. If he takes fifth, he goes down to, you know, 11. So that's a big, that's a big yeah, difference. No, for sure. Now Kasich, Kasich's getting 15 now as a third placer. If he won the whole thing, he'd go up to 22. That's seven points. That's a big jump. Um, so Penn State, well out in front. Um, we're talking about team point, uh, the most ever territory. Because um, my my projections kind of skew just a touch low, just a touch low on bonus. Um, but Iowa, Iowa right now, and this goes uh, largely hinges on Teamers twenty two, um, looks clearly in pole position at number two. I mean, clearly locked in on its own tier at number two. Uh, If Teamer comes back and takes anything fifth or higher, they're taking second. Um, And that doesn't even account for, could they, could they steal some points with Kale Peterson 
um, mm-hmm. rounded into form by the end of the year uh, at a weight that's totally unpredictable. Ryder Block um, getting in on the back end, uh, taking seventh or eighth at 141, when the back of 141 is not that incredible. Um, Oklahoma State in third right now with 74 points. Can and and that's with a lot of blood round guys. That's with um, Hughes and Whitcraft scoring minimally. That's with Troy Spratley at fifth and not first, which he certainly could make a final. Uh, that's with Serber blood round, um, and he just beat an All American, so um, he could certainly the, the point projection on Oki State is certainly not max, and they're in third. Minnesota comes sort of out of nowhere. You plug in twenty two. That's a lot uh, of points. You plug in twenty two from Gable and. Right, just like that, they're podium contenders. And again, that's not including um, Cooper Flynn, who could certainly score three to ten at that weight. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Nebraska is at six, um, and they have a path. They have a path to a podium, and that largely includes. Um, Caleb Smith upping his projection right now. I have him at like sixth. He's beaten guys that uh, he outplaced Ramos who I had at two. He outplaced Ramos last year at CKLV who I have at two. So that's an area of improvement that Nebraska could look up on and Trell and Trell's ranked third in the nation. And I have him penciled in at seventh. So that's 10 ish points that he could achieve there. Plus Silas and Pinto uh, 74, 84. If they go from blood round to sixth, you know, that's like eight ish points each. So Nebraska certainly has a chance to hit that next tier with, uh, with that podium with Iowa, Okie state, Minnesota tier, Virginia tech, Virginia tech tier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it'll be fun to track this throughout the year. Um, it's it's one of the fun things, you know. I love rankings because I like seeing where. It's fun when you look at a duel and you see a number ten versus number one, a four versus a five, a, a three versus a fifteen. It's fun, and I think crystal ball too. When you're talking year end projections and kind of seeing where, obviously we all have rankings, but to see where they might end up and uh, stack up yeah. against each other, I think it's cool. That, I mean, I'm digging through. It's pretty cool right now with all the college football playoffs projections. I love watching that. Oh, you know, we... it's nothing. You know, nothing's carved in stone. So, well, well, while recording, um, we just got an update. I'm going to put it on screen here. There you go. We just got an update. You just had that ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> we. Just... <laughs> all right. Here's the updated projected playoff bracket. What do you think? Of course uh, they got Alabama in. Of course they they, they found a way. Um, name a time. Name a time when Alabama, and this goes throughout any season, every freaking year, Alabama will one hundred percent always be the highest ranked team with the most amount of losses. Like, if if it's week ten and Alabama has two losses, they will always be the highest ranked two loss team. If they have three losses, they will always be the highest ranked three loss team. I mean, give me a break. Um, Should South Carolina be in? Listen, I'm not going to try to convince anybody if they should be in or out. You all know. Put South Carolina in. Put South Carolina in. Put them in. They have good wins. They have weird losses. Alabama, great wins. A horrible loss to Vanderbilt. I mean, I just they, they won't let these teams play their way out of things. Um, but that's what gets me frustrated is that, like, I mean, they're like, uh, like, for instance, if, if Boise State would lose to UNLV, then Boise State, they lose to Oregon. Nobody faults them for that. But they don't deserve a mulligan for UNLV. But Alabama deserves a mulligan three times? I know. Three losses is crazy. I mean, what? Uh, 
So that gets me. You know, Penn State's in a really funky position, and I think we'll see changes going forward, or, or at least consideration, at least talks and discussions. The pros and cons to, to Penn State, and it's not a Penn State thing. It's how it works. Um, and well, we'll see. It's not so much this way in the SEC this year because they all have losses, but – If Penn State, if Penn State beats Oregon, they might be in a worse position than what yeah. they're doing now. Yeah, they kind of have like, a good path right now. Their their uh, their path would be Arizona State and then Boise State. <laughs> like, give me that. It's a pretty good path. Yeah. Are if they, they gonna... lose to Oregon, they get Should... Arizona State and then Boise State. Breaking news, Penn State medical forfeits to Oregon. They <laughs> medical forfeit. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so that's the CKLV updates. That's Crystal Ball. That's our college football playoff projected bracket. And now let's do a full Ironman preview. All <laughs> right. <laughs> I have to. I for real have to do one tomorrow. Oh, great time of year, though. I ain't complaining. All right, that's today's show. I did not think we were going to go this long. I got to get home and help my wife put the kids to bed and eat some dinner. Um, But comment, and and guys, go to rockfin.com, and I'll link it up below. But that's where Willie has this whole crystal ball. You can see the blood round. You can see the round of 16. You can see the notes. You can see everything there. And there's obviously a ton of other content as well. So when do you go to Cancun? Monday. Oh, so we got time to... We're gonna have to recap Cliff Keen like Sunday before the Bills Rams game at four. Um, dude, I'm um, I'm gonna have so much fun watching wrestling this weekend and Cancun, chilling, doing all the doing all the uh, recap stuff from down there. Yeah. All right. Rankings. That's there. today's show. All like, right. subscribe, comment, follow everybody. You guys rock. See ya.